Hey, what is up? Welcome to this episode of the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Lofermento, but I'm not the only Brian in today's episode because today's guest is an incredible entrepreneur whose message is one that we all need to take to heart because when we talk about growing our businesses, quite often we want to focus on the strategies, we want to focus on marketing tactics and all that other fun stuff, but at the root of all of it is our own well-being. And today's guest is all about enhancing that not only for ourselves, but for our team so that we actually have the ability to grow our businesses. So let me tell you about today's guest. His name is Brian Huxford. Brian's passion of combining entrepreneurship and adding values in the lives of others began at age 23 when he opened multiple fitness centers throughout West Central Indiana. This passion soon found him creating WellFit Incorporated, which is a corporate wellness consulting firm that has positively impacted thousands of lives in Indiana. Indiana and Ohio. Brian is a past president of the Wellness Council of Indiana. He's also a military veteran, thanks to Brian for his military service. He's been married to his wife, Jamie, for 24 years, and together they have three daughters, Zoe, Zara, and Isabella Huxford. I'm so excited. This is someone who practices what he preaches. His values in business are also his values in life and the way that he positively impacts others. So I'm not going to say anything else. Let's dive straight into my interview with Brian Huxford. All right, Brian, I am so excited that you're here with us today. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Heck yes. So I obviously tease listeners a little bit about how much I personally respect and admire the work that you do, but take us beyond the bio. Who the heck is Brian? How'd you get into all these awesome things that you get to do today? Yeah, uh, great question. It's honestly just been an evolution of 25 years, um, really chasing the carrot of how do we impact more lives? How do we help more people? How do we help give them a, a better quality of life? Yeah. And I love that because, I mean, you heard me say it at the beginning of this episode that that's such an important part of growing a business. Brian, you know as well as I do, you work inside so many different types of of organizations, corporations, all different sizes, employee makeups, and we love focusing on those tactics. But what is it for you that made you say, you know what, let's talk about health and let's talk about well-being and let's talk about fitness so that we have the ability to grow those things. Where did that focus come from? Yeah, so um, I think it, it came from me personally. I, I grew up um, uh, on the heavier side of things as a young man and um, started learning how to eat better and, and work out. And I got involved in sports and it prior to joining the military. And it just really impacted my life in so many different capacities. Um, so when we got ready to launch our business um, in 99, 2000 timeframe, we knew we wanted to do corporate fitness. My wife and I were both exercise science majors from IU and um, we had a great consultant and mentor friend uh, that helped us do some market research. And we found out that only 15% of the population go to fitness centers on a regular basis. And we thought, wow, this, this really doesn't work very well. We're, you know, going to open a fitness center to help people. Um, and 85% of them that really probably need our services and expertise uh, aren't going to come and see us. So from the very first fitness center we opened, we targeted the 85%. We we wanted the 40-year-old, the I'm a little overweight, uh, my knee hurts, uh, doctor says my blood pressure is a little high and that I should start a fitness program. But what's that really mean? How do I do that from a everyday lifestyle standpoint. And so we developed what we called real solutions for real people um, and just applied what we called fitness solutions to their lives. So you want to increase energy, decrease stress, lower blood pressure, uh, ease up aches and pains, have more energy through the day. Um, that, that was kind of our credo and what we did in the early years in the commercial fitness centers. 
Yeah, I love that overview, especially here we are. This episode is airing in February. We're past. I always forget what the date is that people say that 90% of New Year's resolutions have already gone to the wayside. And so many people, fitness and health is at the core of so many New Year's resolutions. But Brian, you and I both know, you just dropped that stat on us that most people never follow through with those things. So what I love about your business is that you've seen that niche. You've identified the opportunity to go inside of corporations and help their teams, their employee bases to actually focus on this stuff. What what was that bridge for you? Because you talk about you and your wife obviously opening fitness centers, but specifically honing in on the businesses and the importance of fitness to support a growing business. Where did that bridge come from? Because I absolutely love it. I think it's so brilliant. And that's why we're here today. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I, I think we were really fortunate and blessed to be ahead of the curve on what you see as personal training studios, nutrition coaches, and supplementation, uh, skilled thought massage therapy for injury prevention and rehab. Um, and so our, our commercial fitness centers were really taking off. And just because of word of mouth and we were impacting lives in a positive manner, uh, a little paper mill in you know s- s- West Central Indiana contacted us. They had 150 employees and a little on-site fitness facility and had like five people using it. Um, they hired us to bring our real solutions for real people model um, to their people, which they paid for 100%. I love that part because um, it broke down barriers of some people not being able to afford our services. Um, and within like six months, we had over 50% of the population consistently engaged. People were walking in with, you know, slips from the doctor saying, you know, they're reducing their medications, coming off blood pressure pills, feeling better, keeping up with their kids and grandkids, getting through their work day better. Um, and so we, we knew we were on to something. Uh, we were still doing quite a bit with uh, corporate fitness at that point. Uh, but here's where the story kind of turns. It gets interesting. Uh, was super fortunate to have a, a, a great leadership team at that little paper mill. A good friend of mine and mentor to this day, Phil Farmer, was the general manager. And he took Jamie and I under our, his wing and really started mentoring us. And he taught us about what it means to be self-insured as an employer on the health insurance side and how much money that is costing employers, which we can dive into a little deeper later if we have time. But I'll, I'll never forget, I was sitting there with Phil and Craig. Craig was a CFO and he's showing me healthcare costs. And there was a heart attack and it said $50,000 or something to that effect. And I, I said, did you write a check for $50,000 for that heart attack? And Phil goes, yes. And I said, do you know how many heart attacks I can save you and your people? And he goes, yes, that's why we're here, Brian, because I want you to understand this and help us get a control over our health care. So um, from that, we just kind of evolved into um, larger platforms that, again, allowed us to have a bigger impact in, in more people's lives. Yeah, I love those real life case studies, Brian, because you're right, it illuminates one, the big problems that we have specifically in this country here in the United States when it comes to I love how you called it in your your guest questionnaire, you wrote we are at war for our health in America. And I do want to talk even on that macro level here, because within the world of business and really here within our little corner of the world in the world of entrepreneurship, we have the number one kind of excuse that people have. I always love that quote. You can either have excuses or results, but not both. The number one excuse that entrepreneurs and busy professionals have is obviously time. And they're just like, well, Brian, I hear you on all this stuff, but I don't have the time. I Maybe I have a nine to five. For sure, a lot of our listeners have businesses either exclusively or on top of their full-time jobs. And they're thinking, health and wellness, when the heck am I going to have time to focus on that stuff? But let's get past that excuse. Or if you have a good comeback to that excuse, please look it on our listeners, but on an even more macro level, why the heck have we gone so far down this wrong path, Brian? Where are we getting it wrong in this country? Oh, man, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to address your your question two ways. Uh, First and foremost, for Mr. and Mrs. Jones out there who are you know, burn the candle at both end, working multiple jobs, you know, kids, the ballparks every night. I mean, my wife, Jane, and I, we, we've been there. We understand that and the busyness part of it. Um, all, all I can tell you is, is as we grew and expanded, we really started working around the eight dimensions of well-being because we started asking ourselves 
our coaches the question you just asked, like, why why won't people take good care of themselves? You know, why won't they go for a walk? Why won't they get a good night's sleep? Why won't they, you know, eat a little bit of fresh fruit each day? Um, and, and what we found is they're just really incredibly unbalanced. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the eight dimensions of well-being, there are things like mental health, financial well-being, occupational well-being, um, social wellness is huge. Um, we often think of well-being, we only think of the physical realm. And if people aren't um, creating some balance amongst that and just getting pulled in every direction, it's like chasing the wind. You just don't get anywhere. Um, and so they end up eating on the fly, being sleep deprived, not taking time to hydrate, needing energy drinks to try to get through the day. Um, and it produces a low quality of life for them. I, and, you know, I, I don't want that for anyone. And I, you know, I don't, my team and I are not purists. I mean, we eat cheeseburgers and cookies and like beer too, just like you know a lot of folks. But how do you incorporate some of those things into your life yet keep balance um, to where you don't have three major chronic health conditions that you're having to medicate? So uh, that's how we would kind of look at it from a Mr. and Mrs. Jones standpoint. I, I'm really excited about the younger generations taking over in the, the workforce. Um, I used to be the young guy trying to talk to older CFOs. I'm now the old guy in the room, usually. And um, the younger generations really value work-life balance. And they're they're taking time to do this stuff with, again, social interaction with families and having a meal and breaking bread together, you know, uh, taking time to go for a walk or a workout or go shoot hoop with your kid or whatever it is you like to do. Um, so I think the, the next generation is going to get a little bit better um, as a whole. But then I will flip and go to what I see from corporate America side of things. Any questions on that, Brian? No, I love that. Roll right into that corporate America because that's where I want to go is how the heck do you fit it in when you talk about that balance? Yeah. So um, I've been asking executives a question for about five years now. And the, the question is, do you think you can have a successful organization if you don't first create a culture where your people can grow and thrive? And, and I don't get a no ever. They're like, no, we got to take care of our people. Um, but so much of the tactics for the last 20 years have been lean manufacturing, Six Sigma, you know, black belt, that type of stuff. And it's all about processes and, you know, getting things done quicker. And it wasn't about the people. And, you know, these employers have hundreds, if not thousands of employers, oftentimes, or even a small business. It can be very applicable. So first, you got to create a culture that allows for this work-life balance um, to where people can do some self care, and now with that and technology, you know our analytics have changed the game on what we can prove um, in terms of cost savings. You know, absenteeism, uh, unengaged employees, people not feeling good. What we call presenteeism, the absenteeism. You know, they they show up to work, they don't show up to work. We know what we get, but what happens to the guy that shows up that you know was up drinking, you know beer till two in the morning and then, you know, wash down a monster and a, you know, supersized whatever to just try to make it through the day. You know, he's probably not bringing his A game and going to help you create the next great whatever you're trying to do with your organization. Um, so it's an employer's best interest um, to create healthy organizations that people can grow and thrive in. And I've not even got into the the, the stats on healthcare because that pendulum has completely swung and I don't think we have a lot of options left in front of us yeah. other than prevention. Brian, I'll tell you what, it's it also feels personal that you and I are having this conversation here today in front of thousands of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs all over the world because I frequently get asked a lot of questions from other entrepreneurs, from just normal people out when I'm in a coffee shop or whatever. And they always ask me about running a five day a week podcast is not a small task. It is something that requires a lot of consistency, a lot of discipline. And everyone wants to know, you said it all about the processes. It's like we've become so obsessed with processes but in fact, when I, when my head, hit, head hits the pillow at the end of the day, what I think about that makes this show possible is, holy cow, on our Tuesday recording days, I do six to eight interviews, which means that by the end of Tuesday, I've been on my feet for eight straight hours, full of energy, full of excitement. My brain is really sharp to it. And for me, that's my unfair advantage is forget the rest of it. Most people 
you said, I love the the term, bring their A game. You need to be able to bring your A game before any processes and procedures will even work. And so for me, taking care of myself in that way is super important. For example, I don't drink. That's one of the things that I'm just lucky. I've never liked the taste of alcohol. But in other facets of my life. I've always kind of loved that notion of you should, we should all have three hobbies. One that's good for our minds, ones that's, that's good for our bodies and ones that's good for our bank accounts. And so that's something that I've always taken seriously. I don't personally like the gym, but holy cow, do I love playing tennis and soccer. So those are things that I do. Give us some insights into the way that you operate on a personal level, because I think these are the real secrets. And I always say for listeners that success leaves clues. Take us behind your business. And what do you actually do personally, Brian? Because like I said, you practice what what you preach. And it's one of the reasons why I so deeply respect and admire your work. Yeah. Uh, Well, thank you. Uh, It, it, um, if you go behind the scenes, I think first and foremost, we're, it's, I'm sure your listeners are all over the place from a uh, business maturity um, life cycle uh, arena. So you probably have those who are, you know, really into it and have great businesses. You probably have some who are just trying to get it up and running for the first time. Um, what I'll say to most entrepreneurs is if you've not read the E-Myth by Michael Gerber, go buy it right now. Like, don't waste another minute um, because that is a how-to book on how to build a business that allows you to create some freedom in life. Most entrepreneurs simply create a job for themselves um, and end up working in their business way more hours than they would if they just worked for someone else. Um, so the E-Myth really talks about working on your business. I've always been very intentional about that. I never... I have not built my businesses to try to create a job for myself. Sometimes it happens and you, you get in those roles, but I try to build the businesses with policies, procedures, infrastructure, systems, empowerment of people, developmental programs, and, and let my teams run it. So, so that then creates a, a beautiful quality of life, uh, in my opinion. Um, as for me personally, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty regimented guy. Like I, I, my eyes fly open at 5 a.m. I, I don't need an alarm clock, but uh, if you try to get me to do something mentally after about 5 p.m., the brain just isn't really there anymore. Um, but at 5 a.m., you know, I usually have some prayer, meditation time, uh, love gratitude list, journaling, that type of stuff. Just get some really good neurochemistry going uh, in your in your brain by, you know, uh, thinking about all the blessings that you have in your life. Uh, usually a little coffee with, we're down to just one in the house, the other two are at college. So usually some coffee with my youngest daughter and my wife, Jamie, kind of, you know, plan out our day. Uh, and then they're off and I'm to the gym uh, after checking a few emails and just seeing where business is. Uh, work out daily, um, huge on nutrition. Um, at this point, I eat, uh, love great foods, but I want nutritious foods, right? I, I want foods that are going to give me energy and antioxidants and make me feel great uh, and not slow me down and, you know, have me needing caffeine and so forth. Um, I'm avid on getting sleep, balance in life. And uh, I try to get lunch with friends at least three times a week um, because it adds so much fulfillment, I think, to the lives of others, which in turn generally gives us fulfillment. So that's, that's a little bit of mine. And, and I'm a hobby farmer, so anytime I can be outside with my goats and chickens or cutting wood or something like that, that's just that's fun for me to be away from technology. And I, I feel like it's rejuvenating as well. Yeah, I love those real life insights, Brian. I think that's part of what makes these conversations here on air so special for our listeners to get that glimpse into. And I want to call out two things for our listeners right now. One is, is listeners already know my word for 2024 is building. And you just listed so many of those components of building the foundations, the structures that go behind it, having a real team to support those things. These all fit in. Listeners, this is why we've been so excited to have Brian on the show here today is because all of these things fit in with your business success. We're not just talking about health and wellness in isolation. This stuff extrapolates to all components of your life and of your business, which leads me to the second thing that I want to call out, Brian, which is those high standards that you hold yourself to. This is such a theme for all of the amazing guests we've had on this year and that we're going to have on this year is those super high standards that hearing the standards you hold yourself to, it makes me, it inspires me to want to hold myself to those high standards. So listeners, 
listeners, we hope that this also translates to your own life, that you're inspired by these real life strategies that Brian is sharing with us. On that note, Brian, because all this stuff sounds like Heck yeah, sign me up for that. I want to be as good as you are at all of these things, but obviously we're not all that way. It's a journey for us to get there. How much of your business, this is a little bit of having your health and fitness hat on, but a little bit of talking to you as an entrepreneur. How much of your business is the convincing business where when you're talking to these companies, when you're talking to the employees at these companies, how much do you need to convince them that this is something they need to invest in? Not for you, not for the businesses, but for themselves. Yeah, Uh, so the convincing part used to be really, really hard. And it was hard to pull in the right data sets to understand um, why businesses would wanna invest in our services. Um, You know, everyone would say, oh yeah, well, you know, if our people get healthier, we should save money on healthcare, maybe work comp injuries. Um, yeah, sure, they'll maybe be sick less days, so we'll have, you know, less absenteeism and, you know, overtime pay. But um, now with analytics, if you know how to run the, the, the data correctly, um, the financials are there. So you could, it, it's, it's a little more educational than um, convincing. You know, uh, we, we did a study, we have a client in Columbus, uh, Indiana, that has five years worth of data. And we pulled in health claims. So actually what people were having to go get medical procedures for, Rx claims, what prescription drugs are having to take. And then we're getting a, just under 100% of their population through a biometric health screening each year. And we marry all that data together. And we can show that for a consistent five years, on average, people involved in our programs are saving $3,200 per person per year on the plan. So if you had a 500 employee employer, um, you're talking about a really significant cost savings to them. Um, and so now they're they're seeing it from a different light of, um, we don't have a lot of options, but to start to offer to help our people get healthier. Yeah, for sure. Makes sense. And you're right. That's a compelling case. And obviously, you're armed with real life data and analyses to show that, which leads me to my next question. It's it's a component of your business that I really am excited to hear more about. Obviously, part of your process is assessing the health of businesses, the health of teams within there, which leads me to ask this question as someone who I'm on a little bit of a hiring spree in the past 12 months in particular. And with that in mind, I'm always looking to be a better leader in life and especially in business. With that in mind, how can we as business leaders, so many of our listeners maybe have a growing team or very soon want to have a growing team this year. How can we as business leaders tap into what are the needs of our teams? What is the health of our teams? Obviously, there's one way to just look at it and say, okay, from a weight perspective, are we all good? Like that's the easiest way, but how can we actually on a much deeper and more meaningful level tap into those needs of our teammates? Yeah, I, I'm a huge proponent of uh, doing annual health screenings and, and health risk assessments that allows you to truly measure it. And, and then you can say, okay, gee, 70% of our population is struggling with uh, obesity and 50% of that's in the morbidly obese category. Um, Post COVID, we saw, uh, we see populations with 80% of population struggling with hypertension. Um, and where it used to be younger, uh, people usually have pretty healthy blood pressure. It's not the case anymore. Some of us high, our highest prevalence are in, you know, 18 to 25 year old categories, which I, we, we feel is coming a lot from stress, mental health, probably energy drinks, poor diet and so forth. Um, so I, I like the health, health assessments, uh, actually getting the, the blood work done, taking a blood pressure, but then the health risk assessment too should have more eight dimensional questions on it. You know, uh, things like financial literacy, you know, uh, figure out are you people living paycheck to paycheck? Can they come up with a, you know, thousand bucks for emergency situation or do they have to use something like a credit card to, to pay it off? Those old Dave Ramsey stats really hold true from our findings. Um, you know, you, you, you help them. How are they doing mental, mental health capacity? Um, those programs are just phenomenal, uh, getting mental health prevention, but then also therapy for people who need it. Um, so I, I think 
th there's the, the the health realm that we're we're talking about there. As a young entrepreneur like yourself, well, you you've been at it for a while, but as you're building your team, you know, check in with them too and, and find out what they're new do, needing, right? Like, do the personal development program, do the team building, you know you know, get them together, hire professionals to come in and do disc training or whatever you're going to do. Um, those things really pull a lot of weight and uh, help improve workplace communication, uh, morale, uh, makes for happy, fun workplace environments. Uh, so then our stress can come down a little bit. So it's, it's again, it's, it's, that, it's that holistic, how do I build a healthy culture to take great care of my teams? And Brian, the, the, the real fruit of that is, um, when you build a healthy work culture, it'll bleed back into the family. So what you invest in your people or a company invests in their people, it will translate into how the family's operating at home. And I believe even translate into how people are volunteering and serving in their communities, whether that's, you know, coaching Little League or serving at a church or a soup kitchen or whatever it might be. Uh, as we grow people's skills and abilities and get them leading themselves better, it just pays huge dividend uh, in multiple directions. Yeah, that right there. Listeners, go back and rewind that answer. I think right there, Brian just dropped so many golden nuggets on us as individuals, as business owners, and especially as leaders. And that one key word that you said right there, Brian, is holistic. And it's something that you've brought up a few times in today's interview is you keep talking about the eight dimensions. And I want to call this out for listeners because one of the best pieces of, of life advice that I've ever gotten is how you do anything is how you do everything. And to your last point there, if we start focusing on our team's overall well-being, we're not just talking health, we're talking true overall well-being, it leaks into all the other aspects of our lives. So Brian, because we keep bringing this up, I would love to invite you to talk about those eight dimensions of wellness. And listeners, for the record, if you go to wellfitcorporate.com, we're going to talk about that website again at the end of today's session, but you'll see all eight dimensions listed out. Environmental, emotional, financial, social, occupational, physical, physical, intellectual, spiritual. This is really what we're talking about. Brian, lay some insights there into the eight dimensions for us. Why is it that you take all of these so seriously when you talk about that holistic wellness? Yeah, it, what we find is if a person's out of whack significantly in, in one, it, it pulls you out of whack in the other. So, you know, when I was 23 and starting businesses, you know, I'm bodybuilding and doing mixed martial arts and I'm 23 and just in incredible physical condition. But, you know, I'm growing my businesses and, you know, I'm taking debt and I'm buying real estate. And we're scaling and going from, you know, one to two to 12, 13 location, you know, just just it's just going. And so my financial well-being was probably totally out of whack, which, you know, then drove my mental health, probably not in a great space, uh, added a ton of stress. Um, you know, uh, I was a workaholic. So my social well-being wasn't so great probably wouldn't be in the husband and father that I really needed to be at that time because I was pouring into everything else. So just when you get out of wa uh, out of balance in one, it can really throw off um, the other. If, um, you know, I, I hope our listeners out there are creating amazing workspaces for their employees. Um, you know, I talked to my three daughters quite a bit about, um, I hope they have an employer that has a culture that, challenges them, encourages them, mentors them, you know, pushes them, makes them better. But, you know, if it was just a toxic environment with just no fulfillment from it, I'm going to encourage them to walk away and go work for someone who's better. Um, and it's unfortunate, Brian, that I see a lot of businesses out there that have really poor work environments. They're getting better. Uh, we're making strides. Um, but that's when you're talking eight dimensionally, one will pull you out of whack and the other. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important. That's why I love frameworks. So listeners, truly, you you hear how Brian analyzed his own life when he was busy building his body. He was saying, wait, am I spiritually in check? Am I occupationally in check? Am I socially in check? Take that inventory of your life. It's something I echo on a weekly basis here on this show is taking inventory in life. It's not reserved for warehouses and it's not reserved for physical products. We need to constantly be taking inventory of our lives. And Brian, to your point about you hope your daughters work in a great 
work environment and a healthy one where my head goes. I'm just like, I hope they create one. I, obviously, I'm biased towards entrepreneurship and I want to use that as a transition because I can't let you go today without bringing up your own view on the hugely positive impacts of entrepreneurship, not just directly in the work that you do, but holy cow, do I love what you're doing outside of that with high school students. This is something that's so near and dear to my heart. I started my first business when I was 19. Brian, I want to give you the stage to talk about how as an entrepreneur, not within WellFit, but on your own time and on your own accord, you're also passing this message of entrepreneurship onto students. Tell us all about that project you've got going. Yeah, uh, may end up being some of my life's best work, and I and I really mean it. The, the fulfillment. I we uh, a few other business colleagues and I. What when you build a strong business, it, it allows you to give back. It allows you to give back with your team, with your resources, financially, volunteering. And and I'm very fortunate to be at that season of life where I can volunteer on a significant basis um, each day and week. And so uh, we brought a, a program to our community called Midland CEO. CEO stands for Creating Entrepreneurship Opportunities. And it it is 100% paid for by the local business community. This thing's in like 64 different communities in multiple states now. Um, we brought it to Tobago County where I live in Indiana. But it takes students out of the classroom and it plugs them directly into the local, local business uh, community where they are learning. Uh, they got to be on time. They got to be dressed for success. Uh, they got to have that A game on we were talking about. Uh, they learn communication skills. You know, they've done behavior assessments and they look at different business models. Uh, they had to do uh, a team project where they had to raise money to buy their lanyards and shirts, uh, in which case they did. Um, they're right now building their own businesses that they'll pitch to one of our local bankers, not for real money. They could once they're out of the program, but to get that experience of what that feels like. And then this April 25th, we'll actually have a community trade show uh, where our students figured like a big trade show, you know, in, in a city uh, will have their businesses be selling products um, and learning all about the world of entrepreneurship. It's, we have the most amazing young students uh, young men and women in that program. And it just lights my heart on fire um, to see them growing and developing and, and learning. So yeah, lo love to pass on um, all that entrepreneurship can do. I've, I've got a good friend who's a, a PhD at Indiana State University, and she studies uh, small to large entrepreneurship all over the world. And um, She'll, she'll tell you that uh, entrepreneurship is the fastest way out of generational poverty. So if we really want to raise um, our communities across the U.S., that can be a really beautiful way to do it is helping people learn how to be great entrepreneurs. Yes. What an amazing message. I'm so appreciative of the fact that you are passing that on. This is why I always like to say a rising tide lifts all boats. And you are such a perfect example of the type of entrepreneur that we love elevating. We love putting a spotlight on here on the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur podcast, because this is exactly what we're all about is entrepreneurs lifting other entrepreneurs. It's something that you've been living, preaching, but most importantly, doing for so long in your life. And I so respect and appreciate that, which leads me to to. Now that we're talking about entrepreneurship, my favorite part of the episode, which is the most difficult part for my guests, I just get to listen here, is what's your one piece of actual, actionable advice for listeners here today? We've got entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs from all over the world, as you said, all different phases of business growth and maturity within there. What's that one takeaway with all the great things we talked about here today? What do you hope everyone walks away from today's episode with? Yeah, um, we've said it, but I really hope the listeners tune in here and, and listen to this. Um, just be super intentional about creating that balance in life. Take a break, sit down with pen and paper, quiet place. Think about yourself, you know, financially, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, your occupation, what you're doing right now, and, and, and give it true evaluation. Areas you want to work on, set some SMART goals and start to work on it. Um, know that you'll need to dust that off on a regular basis. The part I want them to hear, though, is you're worth it. Take 
the time to do this and do it regularly. Um, all the people that you lead, all the people that you serve, they need you to be at your best. And if you're out of whack and sleep deprived and living on processed foods and spiritually void or upside down financially, you're not going to be able to be the best version of yourself until you start to get that um, those things in line. You won't get it perfect and things will, will hit you and you'll, you'll get thrown off course a little bit and you'll have to re readjust. But um, you're worth it. Take the time to do that um, and it'll pay enormous dividend for you um, and those you lead. And I, I think just the other thing, Brian, is uh, just, um, everyone try to be a little bit kinder and give a little bit more grace for each other. Right now we have just a lot of um, too many people pointing fingers and blame and so forth. And just think, you know, what what can you do to be part of the solution? Be kind, give a little grace, smile, add a little joy in someone's life. Um, it'll give you a lot of fulfillment as well. Yeah, an incredibly important message from you, Brian. I'm so grateful that that's the advice that you're sharing with all of our listeners here today. And the most important thing is I think that you inspire not just through your message, but through the, through the example that you set. So I can't thank you enough. With all of that said, I know that listeners are going to be keen to go deeper into the journey of your own work, all the amazing messages that you put out in the work that you do. So drop those links on us. Where should listeners go to more deeply connect with you as an entrepreneur, but also with your business, WellFit Corporate. Drop those links on us. Yeah, you can go to wellfitcorporate.com. Uh, I personally am on LinkedIn and have a, a pretty active uh, uh, role on LinkedIn. I'm easy to connect with there. I love meeting new friends, so please don't hesitate to reach out if I can assist. Uh, WellFit's on Facebook. It's got its own LinkedIn page as well. So uh, those are some places you can find us. Yes, listeners, you already know the drill. We are dropping those links down below in the show notes, wherever it is that you're tuning into today's episode. It is wellfitcorporate.com. We're also linking to Brian's personal LinkedIn. If you want to connect with him, say thank you for his amazing insights and for coming on the show here today. But Brian, on behalf of myself and all the listeners, thank you so much for being so generous with your time, your insights, your example, and your perspective on all these things here on the show today. Brian, thank you. And um, you bring great energy. You do very good work and you made this a pleasure. So please take care of yourself as well because you're serving a lot of people and you're, you're, you're planting a lot of good seeds, my friend. <laughs>